Thank you for joining IAB There. Hi, this is Brad Behrens, IAB's Editor-in-Chief. On today's IAB There, we bring you an interview from our recent Brand Disruption Summit. Venture capitalist Carter Room interviews entrepreneur, DJ, and documentary filmmaker Paris Hilton. Enjoy the interview, and stick around after for information about IAB's next big event, the annual leadership meeting. So let me see if I got this right, Paris. Uh, 19 product lines that have done over $4 billion in revenue in the last decade globally. You're the highest paid female DJ. You got a social audience of over 65 million people, 55 million streams of your songs on Spotify. And if I'm reading this right, your TikTok hashtag, That's Hot, has gotten over 5 billion views. Um, in the last 90 days, your potential daily PR reach has been between 1 and 3 billion people globally and you've been mentioned 425,000 times uh, online during this time. Uh, your documentary, not only 70 million views of the trailer, uh, but over 20 million views in the first 30 days. Gosh, this list goes on and on here, but I'm almost done, I promise everyone. Uh, and then coming out of your film, 175,000 people have signed your change.org petition, uh, and you've had 100 million views of the hashtags breaking code silence, and I see you, Survivor, that have come out of the movie. Um, Gosh, is there anything I missed or did I get it all? Um, you missed a little bit. But <laughs> I did I'll a pretty good you. job. Uh, well, I have to say, Paris, I'm very excited to do this. Um, obviously, I've gotten the pleasure, uh, given uh, our private lives, to be your partner uh, for the last year. And uh, obviously, my day job is running a venture capital firm called M13, where we launch companies and invest in the most innovative ones. But I can honestly say I've learned a ton from you around brand building, around innovation, and how to be two steps ahead. So I'm excited to unpack this and let the rest of the people uh, understand what I've understood. So Paris, let's just start with, why'd you do this documentary? I feel the world just has so many misconceptions about me and I wanted to show them who I truly am, the businesswoman I am, the empire I've built. And then it just got very personal and I said a lot of things that I have never discussed before publicly. And so I think let's, let's keep going with that for a second. So obviously you have a lot of words that describe you, businesswoman, DJ, musician, artist. Uh, I think I probably uh, can speak for everyone where we did think we'd w use the word activist to add to you. Uh, but it's clear that, you know, your original intention with the documentary was to drive awareness around the troubled teen industry and the abuses that uh, obviously happened to you, but also millions of people um, over a very long period of time. Um, I think it's safe to say you've now created a movement coming out of this movie, right? Uh, recently, uh, you went to Provo, you had a few hundred people show up who literally drove from around the country to gather with you, tell their stories, march past the school. Uh, you just launched a new single, uh, I Blame You, and I saw all your proceeds are, are going back to breaking code silence. You know, why is this movement important to you? Going through what I went through is one of the most traumatic experiences I've ever went through in my life, and it's something that has affected me until this day. And to know that there is hundreds of thousands of children going through the same thing right now, I just can't sleep at night knowing that. So I want to use my platform and my voice to be a voice for them and to raise awareness and change this entire industry. And, and to do that, my understanding is you've hired right an impact producer. You're working with uh, Senator Sarah Gessler from Oregon uh, on legislation. Uh, and is it true you guys are even uh, penning an op-ed piece that is hopefully going to uh, appear somewhere soon? Yes. Cool. Um, I'm doing everything it takes. Uh, this is just the first steps. We went to Provo. Hundreds of survivors came to meet me. It was one of the most empowering days of my life just to be out there and just to be strong and expose them. 
and it's already made such a huge difference. I've been speaking to people in the industry that have said in the past couple weeks since my films came out, there's been more change in the troubled teen industry than there has in the past 15 years. Cool. So I'm um, just, you know, this is just the beginning and I know this is going to help save a lot of children. Cool. cool. Maybe just one more question about that. The other day you asked me to print a, a file for you. I obviously said yes. Uh, it wasn't until after I hit print that I realized it was about 1,200 pages and it was a PDF of all the letters and notes that you received. Talk to me about those letters and notes. You know, what have they said? What's touched you? I've watched you read them and cry, but you know, talk about those for a little bit. I've received thousands of letters from survivors and kids who have went through the same thing I've went through. And it's just been, you know, really difficult to read because it's it's obviously hard because it brings up so many memories of things that I've went through as well. But just to hear people saying, saying thank you so much for validating me. No one has ever believed me. And the fact that you're raising awareness on this, I'm finally being believed and I'm finally fe feeling validated at this, you know, very difficult point of my life. Um, so it's just been amazing, just the outpour of love and support and also, you know, people who didn't understand me before finally understanding who I am. All right, so let's, uh, let's turn to innovation. Obviously, kind of at M13, uh, we invest in kind of the, the next generation of consumer tech companies, right? We're trying to always think about what are consumers going to be doing in the next five or 10 years. Um, that's why we've invested in things like AirChat, uh, the kind of native to voice communications platform, or the device that you always borrow from me, my Feel More Cove device, where you kind of wear it for 20 minutes every day and kind of scientifically reduces stress and anxiety using NeuroStim technology. Um, I think it's safe to say that you have always been an innovator, right? You were the first person, as the movie says, to understand that you were your own personal billboard, right? And understood personal branding. Uh, you were the first person to have a reality TV show in The Simple Life. Uh, you were the first to get on social media. You created the selfie. You pivoted to being a female DJ and obviously have built a very big business out of it. Let's talk about some things that you're kind of um, excited about for the future. Um, let's talk about areas that you're focused on in terms of building businesses in the next five or 10 years first. I'm focused a lot on wellness, health, beauty, and fashion. Cool. And uh, I've seen you uh, investing in quite a few things. Talk to me about how you think about investing. Why does it get you excited? And, and maybe give everyone an, an example of a, a company you've invested in to give them a sense. Well, I give you guys credit for that. Um, you and your brilliant team M13 have really opened up my eyes to this whole new world of investing. And I think it's incredible to invest behind entrepreneurs that I really believe in. I'm excited to invest into entrepreneurs who I really believe are doing projects that are gonna help better the planet. Cool. Yeah, I've been, I've been impressed. You've obviously been uh, investing behind kind of female entrepreneurs like Rachel from Daily Harvest. Uh, and I can tell you always gravitate towards things that matter to you, whether it's Zen Water and kind of their sustainable packaging or good catch uh, on the vegan seafood side or, or obviously Daily Harvest. So uh, it's been fun to watch. Um, so I think it's safe to say you arguably have the most iconic voice probably on the planet. I might be a little biased, but I think it is the most iconic. Um, you've been focused a lot on audio and voice. Um, I know you're getting ready to, to launch something yourself and you've been investing behind the space. Let's start with kind of what you're doing in audio. Audio is a huge focus for me and I just signed a deal with one of the leading audio and media companies. So I'm super excited about that. I'm going to start doing my podcast soon as well as producing other podcasts in a new and innovative way that no one's ever done before. Cool. Uh, you have always been an innovator, so I can't wait to see what you're brewing up in audio. And my understanding is uh, you've also been investing in the space? Yes, I recently just invested into Pods, which is an audio news feed where you can swipe through it and listen to certain podcasts. Seems like a very good way to discover new podcasts. So I have a yeah. feeling you did it because a lot of people are going to be discovering your, uh, your, your new uh, podcast through, uh, through Pods. So smart. I'm always thinking one step ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I do know that. Uh, before we move on, let's talk about trends. I think it's safe to say no one understands uh, future trends better than you. Uh, what's a trend that everyone in the audience should be focused on? Live shopping. I am obsessed, especially during the quarantine. I've just been going on different live shopping apps and I think it's just so entertaining. It's fun. Good shopping, it be social. And I think that that's gonna be something that's huge in the US soon. It's been in Asia for a very long time. Like I did it a couple years ago and I've loved it. And I think that's gonna be something that, especially with this new world, that's going to be huge. Yeah. yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head. We're very focused on it at M13. To me, it's the perfect convergence of entertainment, 
e-commerce and social. Um, and especially when you think about what retail is going to look like coming out of COVID-19, I think this is probably the time for live shopping. So yeah. um, let's uh, switch gears a little bit. So during COVID, uh, one day I saw you in the kitchen, you were filming some YouTube and you put out an 18 minute episode that you called Cooking with Paris, uh, where you made your sliving lasagna. Uh, and as, as I described it, you look like Lucille Ball in the kitchen. Uh, my understanding is uh, you, you now potentially have a TV show coming out about, about cooking. Um, you know, let's talk about that and, and how do you think about kind of digital series and things like that? Um, well, I wasn't planning on having a cooking show. It was something I, you know, would have never thought of. But during quarantine, I was cooking and then all the networks started calling when they saw it. And now I have a show that we start shooting next week. Can't say with who yet but I'm so excited. It's gonna be every week, me and a different celebrity here at my house, cooking and just talking and be a very interesting guest. So it's gonna be fun. Cool. Uh, needless to say, you have a lot going on always, Pete. Yeah. Um, but I think it, is a, it does show a side of you that I think is really important to bring out, right? You are constantly innovative, constantly thinking. I think that's a great example and something a lot of brands can learn from in the sense that you had no intentions to have a cooking show, right? but you filmed some content, you put it out on YouTube and you were just blown away by the reaction of both the media as well as your fans. And all of a sudden you kind of tested it and, and you decided to scale it. So uh, I think uh, kudos to you. And the other thing I know you're up to is a live TikTok show. Will you talk to me about that for a second? I recently just did one with Jojo Siwa. We had over a half a million people watching and it was so much fun just doing it live, interacting with the fans. I love TikTok, I love the format. And now I'm going to be doing a show where I'm going to integrate different brands and sponsors. So, um, yeah, this is going to be a whole new way just to do kind of a live series. I mean, I, uh, I love there's just so many different formats out there. And whether you're a brand or you, uh, it's important to test because if you're the early adapter, you tend to be able to kind of get ahead of the competition. So cool. Let's keep going down that path. Um, obviously, you're well known for your product empire. I talked about you know 19 product lines, four billion in revenue. Um, but now, when you hear you talk, you've obviously been very much focused on the media side of your business, right? Um, an audio company. Obviously, you've continued to do television and film. Uh, I think ParisHilton.com is launching in in a week to kind of work more with emerging brands. But talk to me about why the media, and not to mention things like the TikTok live show. Um, but why is the media side important? Is it so you can kind of work with other brands or, or why, why that? Uh, because formerly you focus a lot more on products. Yes, I'm building an integrated media and product platform. So I'm very excited about that. And I want to just be able to work with brands of all different sizes across all of my different social media platforms. Cool. And I don't want to steal your thunder, but I did see some of the early results from uh, ParisHilton.com on the digital side. Uh, and it was fun to see how having somebody like you attached to kind of some of the paid media can really supercharge these brands. So it'll be fun to watch you work with emerging brands on things like ParisHilton.com all the way to, you know, obviously more mature brands, whether it's across uh, your podcast or kind of other channels. So that's cool. So obviously all of us know Paris Hilton is forever young and, and forever 21. Um, but what, one thing that's blowing me away kind of seeing some of the data is just how much you appeal for um, a 15-year-old to a 45-year-old. Um, how do you think about your demographic in terms of who you reach or, or who your fans are? It makes me so proud that my demographic is so huge. There's people all around the world, and I especially notice it when I do different signings for my fragrance or my other products, and just seeing the ages. It could be like a four-year-old, and then a teenager, and then the mom, and then the grandma, the grandpa. So it's really amazing just what a vast um, amount of people from all around the world. And I love my fans so much. Yeah, I think it's a really good point because when I look at the data, obviously it's literally anyone from about 18 to 45. Uh, a lot of females, but actually not all females. Uh, obviously uh, a pretty good male-female split. But it's interesting because all these people have grown up with you in a different way, right? So you have 40 to 45-year-olds who still talk about the simple life and dress up as Halloween for it. You know, then I talked to my brother's girlfriend and she grew up singing, you know, Stars Are Blind and that's what got her through high school or, or things like that. And so I think it's really interesting you've been able to build up such a big demographic and obviously truly global um, because you've had so many touch points kind of throughout your career. So cool. So I promise only one or two more questions and we'll let you go, P. It's okay. I'm having fun with you. <laughs> 
Uh, so you recently hired a very talented group out of LA called Outset to do some brand work for you. Um, they're both thinking about the brand architecture, the brand ethos, um, and also the brand look and feel. Uh, talk to me about kind of why you did that. Well, they are brilliant and I am so proud to be working with them. And I think it's important, especially being a personal brand, to always evolve. So what you saw in the past five years is going to be different the next five years. And I've changed. I've grown up. I'm a different person now. So I really want my brand to reflect that new person I am. I think a lot of the words that I've seen on social media around your documentary, things that I used before, powerful, businesswoman, inspiring, authentic, genuine. Is it safe to say we're going to see a lot more of those words for the brand for the next five or ten years? Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Last question. Obviously, there's a lot of tremendous brands and companies in this room. Why should they want to work with Paris Hilton? Because there is no one that works harder. I am dedicated. I'm passionate. I have a huge fan base all across the entire globe. Um, my success speaks for itself. I've been in this industry for over 20 years, and this is just the beginning. <laughs> yeah, and not to mention now with your new media company, there's a lot of different ways for you to partner with brands. So. Oh, yeah. It's like a whole new superpower. <laughs> and I'm just so excited for the future. I just... The possibilities are endless. I have so many projects coming out that are so exciting. And thank you. I had so much fun doing this interview with you. Cool. This is the first time we've ever done this. Hopefully not the last. Um, I had a, per a great time personally. And I think safe to say everyone learned a lot from you. So thank you, Paris. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening to Paris Hilton and Carter Room in conversation. IEB's next big event is ALM, the annual leadership meeting, running the week of March 8th. To find out more, visit www.iab.com 